Hey everyone, I recently picked up a couple of interesting items at the flea market, one of which is this tin of lithium, under lithium alloy under argon. So uh, let's crack this thing open and see what's in there. So surprisingly, uh, the lithium is actually just here. Uh, uh, it's a very thin metal foil. I was actually expecting uh, another container inside here that would allow me to reseal it. <laughs> Oops. So anyway, uh, let's cut off a piece of this and uh, put it in water. It's a very soft metal. And as we can see, classic vigorous reaction there. You can see the hydrogen bursting. Let's try a bigger piece. So the bucket said that this is 90% lithium. I'm not really sure what the other 10% is, um, but it seems like the, uh, the metal completely reacts with the water. I don't really see a trace of, of any other metal in there. Okay, next up is uh, zirconium powder. So this is pretty unusual. I mean, zirconium metal is unusual enough, but this is a very fine powder, 325 mesh, and it's stored mm -hmm. under water. So this is the zirconium powder down here, and this is just water above it. And I started reading up on this, and the really fine zirconium powder is explosive and pyrophoric, meaning that if you expose it to air, it can self-ignite, uh, which is always fun. So it's stored underwater. But a lot of the MSDS uh, safety sheets say that you can't allow dry zirconium powder to become wet, which is a little confusing. Why is it stored underwater if you can't allow the powder to become wet? Uh, the trick is that the powder must be either completely dry or uh, more than 30% by weight of zirconium in water. Uh, so basically 30% of the mass of the metal must be uh, water in the container that it's being held. So I don't really know what the uh, rationale is. I tried figuring this out online, but I, I couldn't find a clear explanation of, of what the deal is there. I wanted to dry a small sample of this but I was already getting kind of nervous since you're not allowed to have it partially wet. It's okay to have it completely submerged and it's okay to have it completely dry, but how do you actually get from completely submerged to dry without having it in that sort of danger zone of just a few percent water? So I, you know, I think they might be overstating the um, severity of this just a bit. I started with a tiny, tiny sample and what I did is I just put it on some filter paper and left this out outdoors so that it would air dry. And I came back and kind of very carefully fiddled with the powder with this spatula and it, it didn't auto ignite. And so then I, I um, put it over a, a blowtorch flame and that ignited it all right. But I mean, it was not quite as sensitive as I thought. I was half expecting the thing to just catch fire all by itself as it dried, but it, it didn't happen that way. So instead, what we're left with here is uh, the dry powder, it's, it's actually still <laughs> somewhat wet, so we're, maybe we're in that danger zone now, who knows. Um, I only have, you know, maybe a gram or less of it here. And what I'll do is just put some of this over a flame so that you can see it burn. It burns with a really white, intense flame. surprised at how little you need. I mean, I, I took a tiny amount out of powder out of that uh, container and uh, just a teeny little spoonful is all it takes to make a really big shower of sparks. I realized that this plastic container is fairly permeable to oxygen and so I'm gonna have to find a metal container or a glass container to keep that lithium from from oxidizing. 
So let me know if you have any suggestions of what I should do with this. I've got three quarters of a kilo of lithium and half a kilo of zirconium powder. So <laughs> besides uh, just randomly setting them on fire, uh, there might be something more constructive to do with them. Um, obviously the the thing to do with lithium is to make a battery, I suppose, but uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys have some other suggestions. All right, see you next time. Bye.